Oh, you want me to leave this one? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, there's nothing like having potato quality live streaming. Oh, I just love having stream lag, and I'm sure our audience loves that too, right? Exactly. So let's fix it. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Dale. And I'm Walt. This is Live Streaming Tech, and you want to learn more about live streaming online, places like YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Mixer, and beyond. Then... Click that subscribe button and tickle that bell notification until it turns on bright red so you don't miss a single video. Okay, so obviously I was being facetious. I was being sarcastic, all right? Nobody likes to see stream lag. We don't like to see all this choppiness. And actually, that's our second biggest commented uh, issues that people are having in the channel. And I appreciate the comments. Matter of fact, keep those comments coming and we'll see if we can't resolve those issues for each one of you. But I felt that a video needed to come out so we can address it and kind of try to answer the general mistakes or the reasons why you are lagging or your live stream is lagging. We actually got five top reasons that your stream is lagging and how to fix that stream lag. Let's start out with number one, and this is one that you used to just hammer home to me. And I'm gonna hammer it home again. I've hammered this home so many times and nine times out of 10 when somebody hits me up with this issue, this is the main issue of why they have stream lag. And that is they're using Wi-Fi. Okay, so folks, unless you're using this to live stream, don't use Wi-Fi. Never use Wi-Fi. I don't care what Wi-Fi router you're using. You'd be using the state-of-the-art gaming Wi-Fi router, this and that, it just is not optimal. Yes, it's possible, but it is not optimal. You take that ethernet cable from your router or from your modem and plug it directly into whether you're using a laptop, a MacBook, it doesn't matter, or a gaming PC, plug it in. There are rare, rare, rare exceptions to the rule. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you're having stream lag and you're doing it through Wi-Fi, we told you, we're gonna go get in our car, we're gonna visit your house, and we're gonna smash your router because you're misusing it. Exactly. So before you start changing all your settings in OBS, make sure that you are not using the Wi-Fi first. So make sure that you're directly plugged in and you're still not, because I know some there's some wonky uh, PCs out there where you actually physically have to turn off using the Wi-Fi and using the internet. Mine, you plug it in and it stops using the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So hopefully yours is the same. Number two, High CPU and GPU usage. Okay, so let's break it down in layman's term. I know a lot of there's a lot of beginners in here, people wanting to know how to stream or just started streaming. So your CPU is basically your processor on your computer or your laptop, okay. and your GPU is your graphics card. Okay, so let's first let's get down to the bottom bottom of the rung, and that is if you're using a laptop to stream. Most laptops have an onboard graphics card, so you do not have a dedicated graphics card, so your processor is pretty much doing the work of two things. It's basically doing the mathematical calculations when you're playing the game or whatever you're streaming, and it is also taking care of the graphics. So you're already taxing that heavily. And then you are now encoding it and sending it up online, uploading it online for people to see. So you're really putting a lot of pressure on that. So those of you who are using like say a laptop that has like an i3 in it and onboard graphics, you might want to stick to like IRL type streams or maybe something static like say play Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone or something like that to where there's not a lot of uh, graphic uh, heavy graphic usage. So I this. can't expect to do something like say, uh, like a Fortnite. Correct. it's just so Correct. graphic heavy. Well, think back to the days when you used to live stream off your MacBook Pro. Yeah. I mean, even though that had slightly more processing power, it's still, it was, you were taxing that CPU so much because there was just onboard graphics. There's not a dedicated graphics or dedicated GPU to where you could split that task. Which brings me to another thing. Which one are you using for encoding? Now, I've seen comments, a lot of people come in. Once again, I love your comments and keep them coming. Uh, the, there's the big debate over whether or not you should be using your GPU or CPU to do the encoding. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Most likely, if you have an i7 or an i9 in your PC, you pretty much are going to have a bombing uh, graphics card in there as well. Yeah. So you can go pretty much either way and you're gonna get the same results. Now, th there's a thing, all games are gonna be different. It depends on whether it's optimized or not. So for instance, if you were playing a game that is still an early beta 
and it is not fully graphic optimized, I would recommend using your CPU versus your GPU to do the encoding because your GPU is gonna be overtaxed. Now, however, mm. if this game is polished, it's been put out, say like Fortnite, where it is ready to rock and roll, you can probably use your GPU to also do the encoding and stuff. Just be careful on how high you have the graphics cranked and this and that, because once again, your GPU now is doing the double workload. It's now rendering what you see, and it is also encoding what your viewers are gonna see as well. Just know your limits uh, as far as when it comes to the high CPU and GPU usage, that this is gonna affect your lag. So what you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go to number three. Resolution 1080p versus 720p, 60 frames per second versus 30 frames per second. Break that down for folks here for, uh, for him, dude. Okay, so basically what Dale's saying is, is this kind of relates to number two. Uh, is this remember the more you're cranking up as far as the resolution goes and the frames per second, the more you're gonna be taxing that encoder and yep. you're gonna be uploading. And also another thing to take into consideration, how many of your viewers are watching on this device? Where are they watching from? Are they on a terrible Wi-Fi connection or the cell tower really far away from them? Mm -hmm. So remember what you send up has to come down. And here is the worst thing ever is yes, your stream looks great on your end and you got it maybe playing over there on the TV or whatnot and it looks great but does it look great on their end so think about that like you know sometimes more is less um, so the thing is is downstep so that's the next thing you want to do is maybe take that those uh, resolutions down to 720p drop that frame rate to 30 seconds um, and then that's the other thing too you'll be able to drop that bit rate down too which is less taxing on your internet upload speed uh, because the fact that you're having to send less packets of information. Number four, running too many resources in Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. So what does this mean by running too many resources? Okay, so you and I are guilty of this. Uh, but then again, we have PCs that can really handle this. Yeah. So for instance, uh, let me grab this here real quick. So Dale has a Stream Deck here. Dale, what do you use the Stream Deck for? I use that for hotkeys. Hotkeys, what do those hotkeys launch? They typically launch some type of a program, they'll launch GIFs, they'll transition scenes, uh, they'll go to different sources. Okay, exactly, sources. So like he uses a lot of GIFs like I do. Uh, somebody says something in chat, we might hit a button, you know, where a donkey will come up or a monkey comes up throwing poo or whatever. Um, so these are resources. Your most recent followers, uh, that alert is a resource. Your uh, sub alerts, all that stuff, that's resources. Any of your overlays, that is resources. So think about it this way, is you are, instead of carrying one book, you are actually carrying several books. And the more books you stack up, the more load it puts on OBS or Streamlabs OBS. Therefore, you're gonna be using that much more CPU or GPU power. Um, depending on what you're encoding with, most likely CPU is what it's gonna go towards. So the thing is, is less is more. Now what I'm not saying is, I'm not saying go minimalistic, totally minimalistic, and then just strip your stream down. Um, and actually, you're gonna find out more here and a bonus tip that we have later on, so stick around on that one. Before we do get to the last tip, I also want to bring out and bring to your attention, my brother Walt here actually put together a great little short resource guide for you. It is called Live Streaming Kit, how to live stream online for beginners and gamers. He talks about all the equipment that you can use, the places you can go, he makes it super dead simple. You can get your copy by visiting livestreamingtech.site slash book. If you purchase a copy, tag us over on Twitter, tech underscore streaming and we definitely would love to hear from you number five platform connection okay we've done a video on this way back when we first started the channel it seems like forever ago actually yeah. it seems like just yesterday but it's right that's actually been uh, a year now for over, over a year, year now yeah. yeah it's been over a year now for us so i think we released this one in spring and we found this free to use program where, uh, for instance, if you are streaming on Twitch, you can find out which Twitch server is optimized for your location. And this changes a lot. So for yeah. instance, I used to stream going off of the Chicago uh, Twitch server, and then at a different time of the day, that wasn't really the best one to go off of. Yeah. So I would kind of have to bounce around, and with using this program, and it's very small program, and it's like I said, it's free, you can actually test to see which server is optimized for you. Unfortunately, right now, I don't think they have a Facebook one <laughs> where we can pick what servers to hit 
on Facebook. I don't think so. Uh, so that's the thing is uh, all these different pro platforms or whatever, I'm kind of hoping they kind of do what Twitch is doing where you can select and we get a lot more of these hubs that we can hit or servers that we can hit and pick and choose from and be able to ping them to see what speeds we're going to be getting off of them and what's going to be the best connection for. So while that sounds kind of like, well, that doesn't make sense for me, Walt, why would that affect my lag? Well, I got a true story for you. My buddy of mine is, oh, actually I have several buddies that are live streamers, but this one, and I'm not going to name his name because I don't want to embarrass him, but he had it set to auto select through slobs and he had really horrible lag on one of his streams and literally just, he, he, I think he quit like a half hour into it. I mean, that was that bad. Rage quit. Yeah, he rage quit. Um, and then I actually, luckily for him, I just live right down the road and he says, come over, something's going on with my PC. He totally was ready to like throw the PC out the window. He thought it was his PC. Here it was, was somehow, some way, that auto connect went from auto connect to the best Twitch server and it connected him to the Hong Kong server yes <laughs> now mind you we live here what uh you know uh midwest ohio, ohio. Yeah. Uh, i guess you consider it midwest i still consider us east coast but so you can imagine uh, connecting from here ohio in the united states all the way to hong kong yes there's going to be lag on that one yeah and sure. so that's the other thing too is is basically whether you're using obs studio or you're using streamlabs obs make sure you are picking that optimal that optimal server to connect to. And once again, unfortunately, like I said, right now, as far as YouTube and Twitch, or uh, YouTube, Facebook, all them go, you really can't pick or choose. And if you can, it's very slim pickings where Twitch, they got tons, tons. Bonus! Use stream elements to minimize your resource use. All right, you're giving me nerd lingo here again, dude. Come on, let's make it basic for me. Okay, so stream elements is a free use. It's just like stream labs where you can set up your alerts. A matter of fact, there for a while you were using, correct? Yep, I like stream elements. So the other cool thing is on stream elements, you can make your overlays, you can have your alerts, all that tied in to where it's one resource. That's right, so instead of having 50 resources mm. on all these different layers, yes. you have one layer. Exactly, now you're just gonna have one. Now you'll still probably have multiple layers because you're still gonna probably, you're gonna you're not gonna get rid of your gifts. No. I mean, no, your, your uh, emotes or sound effects or anything else that you're doing. But the thing is though, is you're taking say several of those, so your alerts, your overlay, your cam border, your most recent followers, you're putting that all on one resource browser on OBS or Streamlabs OBS and therefore that's gonna reduce taxing your system. So that is another one that you might wanna do. And that's the other thing too, whether you're having lag or not, that you wanna always optimize or make that as clean as possible on OBS. Cause I know me, I, it gets to be pretty trashy on mine. And every now and then <laughs> I gotta go clean some scenes out because there's a lot of stuff that yeah. I was using, I no longer use. And it's like, get it out of town because it's just taking up space and it's cluttering up your uh, user interface when it comes to OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. Dude, uh, so show them, where are they gonna be able to see Twitch server test? How are they gonna oh, be able to do that? That one up there. So we were talking about that earlier, the uh, Twitch server. So that's right there, you click that video. But we also have this one over here, it's an internet connection speed test because you wanna make sure your internet connection can actually handle it. Yep. So choose one of these and either one, you're gonna win.